Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamu alaikum. I am Nisha Rajan from Department of Electronics and Engineering, University of Engineering and Technology, Texala. I am affiliated with Research Group Syndicate of Embedded and Electronics Design C. Today I am here to present my research work titled as Spectral Analysis of Lung Sound for Classification of Asthma and Pneumonia with Legion. Among other authors are Engineer Zahir Hassan Nagvi, Engineer Umar Khan, Engineer Sumaira Aziz, Engineer Muhammad Amar Chaudhary, and Dr. Muhammad Nafisul Hassan. The contents which I am going to discuss are motivation, introduction, literature review, materials and methods, results and discussion, conclusion, references. Motivation. According to survey conducted by World Health Organization, 1 billion people suffer from chronic respiratory disease worldwide. For 50 million suffer from pneumonia, 235 million suffer from asthma, and 3 million people die each year from pulmonic disease. All these facts prove how severe and health damaging all lung diseases are for all humans, which shows that the field of medicine need a lot of advancement for early diagnosis and better treatment to save these precious lives. Various techniques for the diagnostic of pulmonary issues named as X-ray, MRI, CT scan, all of them are quite expensive from monetary point of view and their diagnostic results come after quite some time. Introduction Now moving towards introduction, I am going to discuss lung sounds upon which my research is based. Lung sounds Lung sounds come from lungs when you either breathe in and out. These sounds can be heard using a stethoscope. Lung sounds are of two types, normal and abnormal lung sounds. Normal lung sound when heard by stethoscope is similar to the sound of air, while abnormal lung sound when heard over a patient lung sounds like there is an obstruction blocking their lung airway. Rehazing Rehazing is an abnormal lung sound, which sounds like a coarse whistling sound produced when either respiratory tree is narrowed or airflow velocity is heightened. Common causes of rehazing are asthma attacks, pneumonia, and COPD, etc. So what exactly is asthma? It is a lung disease in which your airways narrow, they swell, and produce extra mucus, which results in rehazing sounds. Pneumonia. Now let's talk about pneumonia. Pneumonia is a kind of infection in which your alveolar inflames causing the air sacs to be filled up with either fluid or pus, which ultimately results in rehazing with perspiration, fever, sweating, fatigue, and vomiting. Lung sound analysis. It involves recording the patient's lung sounds via an electronic device followed by computer analysis and classification of lung sounds based on specific visual characteristics. It requires no oxygen and radiation such as required for MRI, X-ray, and CT scan. Literature review. Now I am going to discuss some of the previous studies done on this subject. In 2015, Lin and Wu analyzed normal and asthma rehazing lung sounds by their propagation neural networks achieving 94.6% accuracy. In 2016, Bahura classified rehazing and normal subjects with NFCC SPM techniques resulting in 92% accuracy. In 2017, Sundar Raj categorized normal disease bronchi 9 and post crackers by autoregressive coefficients, multi frequency spectral coefficients, and support vector machine obtaining 88.72 to 89.68 percent accuracy. In 2018, Oletic achieved 94.9 percent accuracy by classifying normal and asthma rehazing using short Fourier transform and hidden Markov model. In 2019, Sabbath categorized monopolic fully humic disease and normal subjects by using direct discrete wavelet transform, peak energy ratio, ML, SPM, and KNN resulting in 82.9 percent to 86 percent accuracy. Materials and Methods Now let's discuss the method used for this research work. Here, I am going to give the overview of the proposed methodology of this system which include four main steps. Later, we will discuss each step in detail. Data acquisition which includes collection of rehazing sounds from asthma and pneumonia patients while normal lung sounds were collected from healthy individuals. The processing step further includes normalization, segmentation and filtration. This extraction which contains spectral domain features classification in which we use support vector machine as our classifier. For data acquisition, I used electronic microphone and mouthpiece to record the breathing sound by placing it near the subject nostril. That's how simple and easy it is to acquire lung sound without any pipe stethoscope or MRI machine. This process is not only cost effective but also health friendly as it includes no oxygen and exposure to radiation. 
You just need a mic, a sound card and an operating system and you can collect your lung sound. Here is the visual representation of how we collected our data. Data was collected from 300 subjects. For asthma subjects, we collected 1000 samples from 14 female and 60 male with age ranging from 12 to 47 years. For pneumonia patients, 1000 samples were collected from the age range of 28 to 67 years with equal number of male and female subjects. 1000 normal lung sound samples were collected from healthy subjects with 50 female and 50 male with age range of 27 to 69 years. I recorded 10 samples per person with duration of 10 seconds, 44.1 kHz sample frequency with single channel and ultimately saving the samples in broad wave format. And that is how our raw lung sound signal of all three categories looks like before pre-processing in time and frequency domain. Pre-processing in material lung sounds are required for feature extraction and classification. For pre-processing, I use three steps, normalization, segmentation, and filtration. Normalization of lung sound is must as it not only helps remove variation in recorded sample but also creates linearity in data. It also removes unnecessary noise, peak values, and gains time for data training. Here we use min max normalization algo, which means that the minimum values in lung sound is mapped to zero and maximum value is mapped to one. Its formula is as given as follows. Segmentation. It is the division of an entire signal into smaller segments, parts, or frames. In this research work, it is done by framing of signal in which lung sound is divided into frame duration of 250 milliseconds to remove non breaking and silent parts. For filtration, I designed butter burst band pass filter of 10th order with frequency range of 250 to 50 Hz. Burst band pass frequency is at 250 Hz to filter out DC offset, heart, and muscle sound. The other pass band frequency at 2 kHz attenuate frequencies outside the classic scope of 2 kHz as well as help avoid structural aliasing. Lung signal of all three categories after above discussed preprocessing steps look like this in time and frequency domain. Here it can be seen that all the signals have same range, no noise, and silent parts. Feature extraction. Now we take this pre-processed signal to next step that is feature extraction. For this step, I use spectral centroids, spectral crust, spectral decrease, spectral entropy, spectral fatness, spectral pep, spectral roll of point, spectral slope, and spectral separate. The definition and formulas for all these features are listed in this slide. Classification. Now moving forward to the final step that is classification. For this, I use support vector machines known as SVM because the data is of quite large range and it needs a flexible and time efficient algorithm to classify all these lung sounds correctly. SVM performs supervised learning and it works well for unstructured and semi structured data. Here is the pictorial representation of how SVM creates support vectors and hyperplanes. Results and expression. Now let's discuss the outcome of all this research work adopted for classification of lung sounds. These are the scatter plots in which figure A shows spectral centroid versus spectral crust. Figure B shows spectral centroid versus spectral decrease. Figure C shows spectral centroid versus spectral entropy. Figure D shows spectral centroid versus spectral flux. Figure E shows spectral centroid versus spectral roll of point. And figure F shows spectral centroid versus spectral separate. Here is the comparison inaccuracies achieved by different classification methods like fine tree, fine discriminant, fine canon, but the highest accuracy was achieved by linear SVM. Accuracies achieved by different SVM methods among which linear SVM shows the best result is 96.7%. And this is the conclusion matrix of our system with 5 fold key cross validation which shows 4% error for asthma disease. 2% error for normal class and 5% error for pneumonia disease. Now, if we compare our research work with the previous one, they collected data by auscultating lung sounds by either GM Whitman stethoscope, electronic stethoscope, or a battery powder sensor system from the back of a patient, while I used an electronic microphone with 44.1 kHz sampling rate, air whisper sample, and single channel by placing it near the nostrils to record the waking sound and save it in dog wave format. Also, our proposed methodology achieved high accuracy among them all, that is 96.7%. Conclusion So we can conclude from all this discussion that this is the new approach in the field of pulmonology. This is literally the safest, easiest, cost-efficient, and human-friendly among still existing diagnostic methods. Proposed methodology is also non-invasive and has no radiation harvest. 
also no training is needed to operate this system as this method was designed by using the linear approach. The best point is that the system automatically classifies pulmonic disease such as diseases in asthma and pneumonia patients and the best accuracy was obtained without any expensive technique and without making the patients wear any blood coat and wire. That's why it can revolutionize medical diagnosis of lung disease if it is taken to a practical application inshallah. References Here is the list of references papers. That's the end of my presentation. Thank you. Now you can ask questions in the comment section.